Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and I wanted to show you all about my tank. I have a custom built AGE aquarium. It is seven feet long, three feet wide, and two feet tall. And it's of course a custom built by AGE, um, what is it, acrylic and glass exhibits in Texas. They crated it up and shipped it to me to where I used to live, and then we crated it again and shipped it to where I now live in Southern California. It takes about six, eight guys uh, to really move it. And even then, you know, it weighs almost 800 pounds, so it's not so easy to move. It is an AGE tank, and so it has the uh, metal banding at the top and the metal banding at the bottom. And it also has a PVC, a gray PVC bottom on it, which helps with the weight, but you know, it's a big tank, so it's super heavy. A couple of people have asked about my tank, what it is, what it looks like, how it's set up. So I wanted to show you all what I do and how it is. Uh, so hopefully this will be interesting for everybody. All right, so this tank is full of Marco rock. And Marco rock, if you're not familiar, is a artificial rock. It's, uh, well, I think it's actually a real rock, but it's mined in Florida um, instead of coming from the ocean. So it's a little bit more sustainable, but I do think that I would, if I was starting it again, at least get one piece of real live rock uh, just to sort of seed the coral and algae and that kind of stuff. Um, it took an awful long time for coral and algae to really start to grow in my tank. Um, and even now you can see there's not that much. Now, when I recently switched on the algae reactor, uh, which of course now is not on the tank <laughs> anymore, um, I'll post about that soon. Um, I, do, I decreased the vodka dosing quite a bit, and that actually led to a sanoallergy outbreak in my tank. You can see some of it on the sand here. I'm not too worried about it, not going to do anything specific. I think it'll just kind of take care of itself um, as we get the new allergy reactor that I've ordered uh, online. Um, other things that I'm planning on doing, I do think that really stability is the key to having good success with coral. Not chasing an individual parameter. Uh, you know, it's great if your alkalinity is nine, let's say. Um, but if your alkalinity is seven or 11, I think you could do just fine at it. The real problem happens when you're like, oh no, my alkalinity is seven and a half and I want it to be 10. And so I'm gonna add a bunch of stuff and suddenly change to 10. And that's where you run into trouble. If you are just consistent about whatever level you're at and you just l let your tank sort of be, I really think you're gonna have a lot more luck rather than chasing any specific number. And so with that in mind, I think that's why people who use um, like Zeovit or uh, Triton have the success that they do because all of their parameters are going to be nice and stable. Those systems are sort of designed to replace any extra nutrients that are being used, uh, keep everything stable and just not have anything change. And that's really gonna be key to growing coral and having your coral be nice and colorful. Um, so with that in mind, one of the things that I'm planning on doing uh, is actually starting the Triton method here. Um, still kind of thinking about exactly how I want to do that, um, but that's sort of next on my plan for my tank. So this is my sump area. Uh, it is a custom acrylic sump that I got with the tank and I didn't clean it up at all, so you can see exactly how it looks uh, in the day-to-day -day, uh, operation here. Um, I did just empty the skimmer. It fills up pretty quick. So what we've got here, we'll start at this end. We have some radion ballasts. I bought the Gen, uh, Gen 3 radions, which have those giant white ballasts. And then I have two Gen 4s, which are much simpler. Um, you can sort of see them on the bottom there, the two black boxes. Um, the Gen 3s work just fine. They're Gen 3 Pros. Uh, you don't really see any need to replace them with Gen 4s. Uh, I do plan on adding a couple more Gen 4s though. 
Behind that, we have the Apex. I really like the Apex. Um, I am a programmer. Um, I, I sort of, it's fun to be able to customize everything. And it's certainly nice to be able to see like what your pH is or what your temperature is uh, from afar when you're on vacation, say, and make sure everything's still good. So that whole rat's nest of wires uh, needs to be cleaned up, but I think a lot of us have that. Um, on the far side here, I did have a uh, sort of good idea from somebody on, I think, Reef to Reef. What I did was I bought some plastic sheets of, um, just a plastic sheet of material that has holes in it, and all this stuff is just zip tied to that sheet. And then you can see it's just zip tied to the frame of the aquarium. We have our vodka bottle. The cheapest vodka that you can buy is fine for that. Um, and then moving over here, we've got some filter socks. They're needing to be replaced. You can see the water level is very high there. It's not going through the filter socks. It's just um, overflowing that section of the sump. So uh, change your filter socks every couple of days, but I was on vacation, so didn't get a chance to do that just yet. You can see the empty place where my allergy reactor was uh, hanging down there, but um, obviously that's not there. Um, I have a separate video that I'm gonna shoot about the AR Pro allergy reactor. Um, had some trouble with it, so I'll let you know about that when it's up. We've got the skimmer itself. It's a Vertex skimmer. Really like this skimmer, it works really well. Pulls out a lot of junk. Uh, you can see all the foam that's coming out of it already. Um, Cleaned it out this morning and it's already uh, going well. I would strongly, I would highly recommend the Vertex uh, skimmer line and the pump line as well. I use a Vertex return pump. Um, so then we can move over a little bit further and we have in the back there, uh, I have a 300 watt heater that you can't see because it's behind the skimmer. Uh, and then that's also where the probes for my pH and temperature are. Um, some miscellaneous wires that need to be cleaned up. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and then we have the top off water. I use these five gallon tanks of water. Uh, just bought them, I think, on Amazon. Pretty cheap little uh, containers that you can use for water. Uh, and then I use a Tunes Osmolator. It's a really nice optical uh, top off sensor. It detects when water evaporates and Remember, you should maintain the, or put that, that sensor in your return section. So behind that bottle of water is my return section, and it goes back up to the tank. Um, it's a Vertex V6 pump. I'm not sure if they still make them anymore. Um, I think it pumps about, oh, what is it? Maybe like 1,600 gallons per hour or so. Um, something like that, 1,600 gallons, 1,700 gallons, somewhere in that range, uh, up to my tank. Um, so that's doing well and, and getting some good turnover in my sump. You can see my Vortec hang uh, or controllers. I don't have a good way to mount the Vortec hangers because the wires for them are not long enough to reach all the way around my tank. So I just kind of drape them over the side. Um, I'll show you. You can see <laughs> it's kind of a, not the best setup here. Um, they really are just draped over. Um, the crossbar here of my sump. Now my tank is, I am tall, I'm 6'2", uh, and I wanted to be able to look in my tank without really having to bend over. So normally that would be a problem, um, but since this is a custom tank, it's a custom stand, and I had them build it 40 inches tall so that I can just look into the tank without having to really bend over. Um, but, you know, getting a 40 inch tall thing through your door is not gonna be so easy. So they built it in these two sections um, and then it just comes apart into these two sections. So the lighting on my tank is done with Gen 3 and Gen 4 Pro Radeons. I have six of them, four Gen 3 and two Gen 4s set up right now. And I use the Radeon rails because it just gives a nice uh, clean um, sort of spread to the light. And it's, it's easier than hanging it from the ceiling, I think. It also lets you do things like uh, angle their lights. You can see on my tank, I have some that are horizontal, some that are perpendicular, and some that are a mix between the two. And that's because my tank is three feet wide and um, it takes a bit of light or a bit of uh, thinking to get all the light through all the places. 
I do want to add two more lights. I think um, maybe two more in the center here. I do have where you where there's no light here. You can see um, like between these gaps, there's actually a metal cross brace on the, my tank. And I was afraid that it would kind of shadow. In fact, you can see it does shadow the way it is now. You can see that vertical line of light, uh, that sort of like diagonal line, sorry, of light going down into my tank. That's because right up there is a metal cross brace on my tank. I don't really have any, like obviously you can't shine light through steel, but if I can come up with a way to get rid of that shadow, I'd like to. Um, you can also see right up here at the top where it's, I don't know, some really huge number of par. Uh, I haven't even really measured it, but I'm sure it's over a thousand. Uh, my frag rack is, and I've really found that in my tank, you know, people will say, oh, 200 par is great. Um, I say as much par as you can get is gonna be fine. Just don't go from 200 to 1,000 overnight and you'll be fine. And my thing. lights are all running about, I think, just because of the way the color is set up, um, about 74, 75% intensity. Because, you know, to run them 100%, you would have to be happy with just the spectrum that that gets you. And I, um, I like to use the, um, Coral Lab spectrums that Ecotech Marine provides um, for this, which ends up netting out about 75% intensity. Overall, really happy with the Radions. I think they're super clean. They're really nice, um, easy to program. It's really cool that they're quiet and unobtrusive over your tank. Um, certainly, coral grows fine under them. Um, I do need to add a couple more though. They're just kind of expensive. You can see the Vortex again, um, just a little bit better view here. Um, I have two of them on each side. Uh, on this side, I have the new style um, MP40 um, Vortex. And on the other side, I just have the slightly older style MP40 uh, non-quiet drive Vortex. Um, the quiet drive ones are noticeably quieter, so I would definitely recommend uh, getting those if you're maybe you're looking at some used equipment. I would recommend the quiet drive ones over the other ones They also pu push a lot more water So hopefully that was interesting. Let me know if you have any questions uh, about anything in the tank um, Anything I didn't cover Coral fish whatever you want to know. I'm happy to give more information So till next time. See ya. Have fun. Bye